In this video, I'm going to show you how you can bake the leaves into textures and have a more procedural and automatic approach on this. So in Houdini, let's start out with building a leaf. So we're going to use the three tools. So start out with a trunk generator. And we want like just like a very small branch with a few leaves. So the trunk itself can be quite small, like tree, for example. And we, of course, need to change some of the radius. So it's like a small trunk here. Maybe end it here in a point. We have something like this. And also the noise is quite intense. So let's go to noise. We can either just disable this or maybe just make it more subtle. We can also add line noises so we can have some variation there. And we can also make this more uh, subtle with with lowering down the intensity. So we have some variation there, but not too much. Then from there, we're going to add some branches. So branch generator. Just plug in these inputs. We will have here some similar noise. So we're going to first of all go to noise and maybe just disable this. And we can also enable line noise if we want to. So we can add some, again, some randomness in there. Let's go back to general. And I'm going to add more branches here. So I'm going to go for the edge length mode. And let's lower this to maybe around, let's say, point, point 0.25, something like this. We can always go more if you need a lot of them. We can here add a lot more of these branches. Then here, I'm also going to play around with this ramp. So, or we can just even disable this. So you can see that they face a lot more upwards. Maybe we can have like a subtle here, subtle variation there. They can also here play around with then how far they should go. Play around with the angle variation. Maybe lower the size if we want to. I um, think I'm going to just leave it like this. It sounds, that looks good enough. Now next up, let's place some leaves. So I'm going to grab here leaf generator. So by default here, it will place down these basic leaves. But I want some real leaves. So I'm going to grab here the simple leaf tool. And this will make a simple leaf shape. So this is the default shape for this tool. And this is already a pretty good result. So if I want to bake it, I'm going to bake it from a side view. And maybe the rotation here is not that nice. So I'm going to go to some of the rotation. Maybe let's play around here with the, the pattern here. And I think setting this to another pattern is definitely more interesting. We can also here play around with the size because they are now all the same. So we can have variation here. We can make them bigger, but I don't think we need to make them that big. So I think that looks pretty good. So here we have now the branch and let's now think about baking this down. So let's place down the maps baker. And for this maps baker to use, we actually need a low poly and a high poly. So of course, this is my high poly and my low poly will just be a simple grid or plane. So I'm going to use the grid here and I'm going to then go into a side view and start looking if I have a correct size. So let's go to front view here and I need to resize this a bit more like so. And we're going to make sure it's a square. So in this case, I could say maybe a square of five. So I'm going to take a little bit bigger, 5.5. And I'm going to place it like here, like so. Maybe we can even go a bit bigger if your branch is bigger. And we also don't need these, uh, all these rows and columns. So we're going to just set this to two. Now, one more thing to do here as well is adding UVs. And I'm going to use the UV projector. Then in here, we can go to initialize and press the button initialize and it will automatically fit to that grid. So if I go here to my UV view, it's nicely fit in that space. Now let's plug in here then my low poly and then my high poly, so the geometry output. And that's all set up now. The one more thing I could tweak here as well is the color of the branch. So we have like this default uh, color here. And at the moment, everything is actually stored in vertex color. So if I go to my attributes, we can see that we have a point attributes. We have our color, so the CD, our color information. So we are not working with textures or anything. We're just working with saving colors in point attributes. 
So we can quickly add a branch color here by going into visualize. But there is also another way. We can also just place down a color node and we can set the global branch color here as well. So we can make this a bit brownish like so. And that works good enough for this case. Now let's go into the baker. And we're going to go to some of these settings. So here at the top we have our bake button. So when I press this it will bake out. Then we're going to save out where the files are. And we're going to give this a better naming. So we'll change the hip file to just leaves. And then we have the channel name, which is referencing to, uh, for example, the color Oreo. So it automatically names these maps as well. That's done. Let's also go to resolution. So it's now set to 1K, which is quite high for just one branch for your game. So we can make this lower. We also have then here a tracing mode and we can actually visualize this. So this is how far the race will go. And if I go and preview my model, I see that I don't have enough space and my low poly should actually be more behind here. So I'm going to go grab my grid, set this here all the way down here so I have enough space to capture this information. And I'm also going to then increase this distance here. So maybe let's start out again with five and you can see that this is more than enough. Then we also have preview channels so this will later be used when I finish a bake and then furthermore we have a lot of options here to output different maps at the moment I'm only interested in baking out the color or the vertex color so I'm going to disable AO and I'm going to only render out the color which is then of course referencing to that CD attribute here so now let's go and press bake here and I can see here in my folder I have this texture so I can open this and I have the basic texture of what I had in my scene. So now we can bake these into textures. Also here we can now use this color name and fill it here into our AO channel. And you can see that we will have our tree here. Now next up I want to make this more procedural and automatic. So let's say you're in your project you need like 50 different versions of leaves. We can just generate this with Houdini. So we're going to make some tweaks to our system. So first step is making this a procedural branch. So at the moment, this is just a quite static branch. And we can go here to some of these settings. Let's go to general. And we can randomize, for example, the length. So let's say that my length here is between 2 and somewhere between 3.5. And we also now have this randomizer slider. So whenever I play around with that, I can see I have random versions. So I can link this to my number of frames. So I'm in my timeline here, I can link this number. And the way we do this is by typing in $F. So this is referencing to number of frames. So if I play now with my timeline, we can have procedural variations here. We can also go to noise in here. And there is some toggle here to also add random offsets here. So this will help a bit more. Let's go then also to the branch generator node. And we can basically do then the same here. So we also have a randomizer here. And let's just also fill in $F, so frame number. And we can also further add more links to my frames if I want to. We can also like have a random uh, length variation every time so we can just use this dollar frame wherever I want. Now we can also go here to my leaf generator and we can do the same here again. So we can just generate these also more procedurally. So now again when I press play I just have every single frame a new tree. Now next step is how do we export all these different trees? So we have this option here for frames. So at the moment it's only rendering the current frame. But if you want multiple outputs, we're going to do a frame range. And right now it's going to bake it from 1 to 240. So we will have 240 different branches as textures. So that's of course too much for now. So I'm going to just delete channel. And we can just type in the manual number like 20. 
Also, one more important thing here is we also need to include this in the name. Otherwise, it will keep overriding the current name. So we're going to have to also add here the dollar $f, which is, of course, the frame number. So when that is set, we can just press render and we will have a lot of different outputs. So that is done. And as you can see, now I have around 20 different branches. So I can just open them, take a look and pick out the ones that I like. So this opens again some new ways of working where we can just generate a lot of these different varieties and start picking out the ones we really like or we want to continue working on. So again, we can render as much as we want to. And also notice that I only rendered out the color here. So if you want to have like a full set of data, like a normal map AO, we can just enable this here and we will also do that 20 times. So we can have this more automated process where we don't have to manually go through every single leaf. Now next up, I want to show an interesting feature with the maps picker where we can actually see the alpha of, for example, plane cards here. So I have these cards from a branch here. So if we disable the material here, we see we just have just these cards with a nice material and alpha map. So the map picker has a option to detect this alpha map of a other texture and it can see through it. So it will be able to bake what's beneath here. So what's beneath these leaves so it can detect this. So this can be useful for, for example, if I need an imposter of this tree, I can bake down an imposter into a single plane. So before we can actually bake this into another texture or another plane, I actually need to do a little preparing of this. I'm going to grab a material and I'm going to use the quick material. So I don't have to go through making a full material, just only quickly adding the maps here. So the main thing we need to do is to use a principal shader and we're going to add a base color and an opacity. So for my leaf, I just have a basic leaf and a leaf with alpha. So before I actually used a quick material, but I would recommend you using a full material like I did here. This will give a better result when you are picking. And we need to do a similar process here for then the branch, otherwise we won't really see this in the texture. So again, quick material. So I took this texture from Quixel Assets. It's just like a basic bark material. I also recommend you filling in an opacity here. It will work without as well, but I recommend you if you want to, of course, get a clean result to fill in a opacity. So in this case, just a white value will be okay. So I just made this basic texture that is just a white color. So that means that the baker has actually a value to work with instead of, uh, instead of having nothing really to work with. So I'm going to fill this in over here. So now I have this result. In the leaf generator, I'm also going to disable pack an instance because I noticed that helps a bit uh, with generating the result. And now let's bring in a maps baker. So here I brought in a grid and a maps baker. So again, the grid is just covering the whole area here of my tree. So it's the same process as with that leaf we just did. But now it's just a tree. So it's just a grid projecting the UV. So we nicely have a full range there. We're going to use this as a low poly and then this is done by high poly. Now in here we're going to again fill in a name. So I'm just going to call it tree channel. Then I'm just starting this to use as 1k. If you want better quality you should increase this of course. We also, you're also going to double check the tracing distance. So I already set this to 13 which gives, a, gives us a good range here. And I'm going to do a preview of the diffuse. Then here what we're going to output are the diffuse and the opacity. So this is referencing to my material here. And this is then looking at the texture and the alpha map. So it will look at these two values from the geometry. So I don't have the other options enabled, only those two. And at the bottom here under advanced, this is the setting to actually use this new feature to look through opacity maps. So here we're going to enable opacity maps effect to tracing distance. So when this is enabled, I'm going to go back to the top and I'm going to press bake. And this is the my result. So I can already see it here in my viewport because I have the diffuse enabled, but let's also look at the texture. 
So here in my folder with the outputs, I can now see my tree. And we can see the individual leaves there with the opacity and looking through the opacity of that texture. So I can also have now a detailed alpha. So again, you can maybe see that the quality is a bit lower here. That is also because it's a 1K uh, map. So we don't have that many quality here. And we can also in the baker itself, uh, we can have here some more samples and create some of these details in there. So overall, this is a really cool feature if you, for example, need certain like imposters for your game. So in the background of your game, you have then these, just these cards sitting there. And when you go closer, you then switch out the LOD to a more detailed branch. And that was it for this video. I showed you how you can use the Baker in a more procedural way, in a more automatic way. And we can also here have baking through opacity maps. So that's also really cool. So I hope you enjoyed this video and thank you for watching.